Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I fear no evil. That is, my friend, uh, leadership. And speaking about a true leader, uh, uh, a lawman that we should all model ourselves after, I have Joaquin Jackson on the phone. Ranger Jackson, welcome to the Mike DeMone Radio Show. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you. Good to visit with you. Okay, Mr. Jackson, we're just having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Okay, are we coming through okay? You're coming through okay. You hear me all right now? Yeah, now we definitely got you. We definitely got you, sir. Welcome to the show. We were just speaking about the Rangers, but I didn't want to get into it. So could you give a brief history about the Texas Rangers? Yes, the uh, Rangers are unofficially founded by Stephen F. Austin when the original 300 settlers came to Texas on Washington on Brazos. He hired 10 men out of his own pocket to range the area and protect the settlers against the Indians. Uh, the Rangers continued on to become officially uh, Rangers uh, in 1835, around that era. And then they become peace officers along about 1875. All this time they were under the Adjutant General's office. And they continued to. Uh, fight the Comanche and fight the uh, 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 Mexican bandits from the south border. And uh, at that time, the Mexico claimed that the Uasis River was the boundary of Mexico and not the Rio Grande River. So there was a lot of depredation in Texas, uh, especially inside what they call the Uasis Strip, the Uasis River and the Rio Grande River. And, uh, 1935, uh, Rangers still being under the Adjutant General's office as they had been for many years, Rangers were uh, brought into a newly created Texas Department of Public Safety created by the state legislature. And the Texas Highway Patrol was five years old. They were under the Texas Highway Department. The Rangers and the Texas Highway Patrol made up the nucleus of newly organized Texas Department of Public Safety. There was a gentleman named Ferry, first director of the DPS. When he left in 37, well, Homer Garrison, Jr. took over as director. Homer Garrison, Jr. loved the Rangers, and he, he brought, started training the Rangers in modern criminal investigation and forensic sciences. And they've just moved forward year to year to year and continue to be trained and meet the times of the time change where the Rangers adapt to it and move right on. And you came on the job. You were a Texas Ranger in 1966. I just went over briefly with the uh, my listening audience what was going on in the 60s. There were a lot of radical movements going on, a lot of, uh, especially out east and the northeast, there was the BLA, the Black Liberation Army, the FALN. There were a lot of radicals running around the country. And uh, you must have had a tough time just patrolling on your own because uh, I, I also uh, referred to your uh Website oneranger.org, dot org, and and you look like a, a big guy. What are you about six foot six? six I'm six five, about two thirty five. Yeah, so you had no trouble working by yourself, did you? Well, no, but you know, it, the size of man is that, that's not what counts. You know, it's what's it's what uh, is in his heart. You know, and, uh, you know, some of the toughest rangers that I've ever known were. Being five, seven, five foot eight, you don't have to be a big man. But uh, being, being, being of a large stature does help you in the sense that a lot of people don't want to take you on when they might take you on if you're five, seven, five, eight. But, but still, anyway, uh, like I say, what's in man's heart is what makes a man. Absolutely. Now, when you came on in 1966, what could you what could you fill our listeners in, especially uh, like I said, we have uh, cops from all over the country and some from uh, different parts of the globe that are listening. What what do you think that was especially stood out in your mind as a rookie Texas Ranger back in the late '60s? Well, the first thing is, uh, having come out off the highway patrol, I served nine years on the highway patrol, and your basic responsibility as a highway patrol was traffic supervision. And of course, you got involved in felony arrests and other things. Third, 
being a state trooper out on the road. And, but anyway, when when I first come into the Ranger Service, well, we didn't. It was several months before I was sent to any kind of a criminal investigation school, so I just put out there and and uh, but any officer that's all Rangers have to have eight years experience or more as a peace officer to qualify for the Ranger minimum minimum age of 30, and so. Uh, you just go out and, and do the job, and you rely rely a whole lot on older hands of the sheriff, deputy sheriff, uh, police officers that have a lot of experience. You listen to them and gain a lot of knowledge from them. And, and as, a, as a Texas Ranger, once once you get established in your territory, we covered four to five counties, and I always worked the rural area. I, I worked in the urban areas from time to time when doing a homicide or, or uh, narcotics burglaries where they were coming out and get uh, houses in a rural area back in the days uh, 60s and 70s. As a matter of fact, uh, heroin was, was pretty, was the drug of the time. Heroin addicts would come in out in the rural area. It hit 10 or 15 or 20 houses maybe in one afternoon or one day and all the people were off working. Take that merchandise in and Trade it, sell it to a fence, or trade it to a dope dealer for dope or heroin. But as a ranger, you learn, especially a rural ranger, you're, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none. You work everything from, from, from domestic. People call you on domestic things. Once you get established, people know that that whenever you show up, that something's going to happen. I mean, I mean, it's not something will be done about it. No matter, and, and a violation of the law to a to a citizen, no matter how small it is, it's big to them. Absolutely. All peace officers, all peace officers are, are, you know, they're public servants. You know, a lot of officers don't want to think about sometimes being a public servant. That's what they are. And, uh, their job is to protect the lives and property of the people. And outside of that, 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 that is it. You know, they conduct themselves and do their job and do what they're trained to do, and they, they'll get the job done. But Absolutely. In fact, in fact, your career has been uh, well documented in both your books, uh, One Ranger, a Memoir, and One Ranger Returns. That I mean, I wish we had uh, to get into every one of uh, uh, the uh, fantastic stories and episodes of your career, but we're only limited to two hours. I mean, I think it would take about uh, uh, two years to really uh, document what went on in your career as far as the exciting factor went. But I'd like to ask you uh, a couple of uh Key things that I think stood out in my mind, especially doing some research and reading some of your books, uh, was the uh, uh, le- when you worked with the uh, legendary Ranger Captain Alfred Lee, and you were involved in a shootout at the Carrazzo Springs Jail, which ended up in a prison riot. Can you speak about that a little bit? Well, uh, Captain Ali, I'll, I'll briefly talk a little bit about him. Uh, back when I came into Ranger Service, Captain Ali asked for me to come in. And he had a vacancy in his Ranger Company D. And he he asked me to serve in his company, and it's all, always traditional that over the years that Ranger captains selected their men, their hand, they handpicked their men, and uh, which is a pretty good method. So if you're going to go do a job, you know you're going to go handpick uh, the men to do the job. It's kind of like a like a SWAT team or a special a special uh, unit of some kind. And uh, but anyway, he I was handpicked later on the Rangers. Uh, I had to go for interview boards and, and, and t- take written tests and go for interview boards. It's what they have to do today. But that, they, but they're picking some good men today. But anyway, 